Hi, I'm Drew Hutchison, and you're tuned to Local Bias, and today we're getting extremely local because we're uh, talking with, or I am, it's, where, what's this, this is Royal we. It's we, we, everybody's talking together. Okay, but well, anyway, <laughs> I'm talking today, I'm Drew Hutchison with Sandy Thomas, and we're talking about the bees, so what's, yes. the, what's the buzz? What's the buzz? Uh, so what the buzz is, is we have a bee fest on May 18th, Saturday mm. this year. Okay, so now there, this Bee Fest has been going on for a number of years now. This is our 14th year. Yeah, right? Yeah. Wow. It's taken off uh, just in amazing ways. And people are now understanding the bee crisis that exists right. because bees are in trouble with their, you the know, the colony different collapse disorder or right, whatever that right, is. Right, the varomites and, and the pesticides being put down. They don't have enough water, enough food to eat the, the flowers. So we now know what to do. And so part of our goal with this Bee Fest is to share that information with other people and also what not to do. So we have beekeepers come, we have artists, we have gardeners, we have all kinds of people coming with expertise to help anybody who comes learn what to do. So now May 18th, is that on a Saturday during it's the farmer's market? It's a Saturday during the farmer's market. Right. Be yeah, and we tie in because <laughs> you're going to say it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. The farmer's market is the best time in Greenfield. Absolutely. And um, we're filming this on Thursday, is it the 24th? Or the 25th? What day is today? Does it's it? 25th. 25th. So isn't yeah, the farmer's market starting up this Saturday? This Saturday. Because it's always the last You've April. Got it. Absolutely. So I, I love Greenfield. And the best thing Amen. about Greenfield is Saturday farmer's market. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's, it's everything that we're about, you know, right? right? I mean, they're all working together. The farmers work together. We work with the farmers. It's like the bee colonies that the workers and the drones and the queen. Everybody has to work together. And that's... Another thing that we're very happy about with Bee Fest is that we do that. We pull together the community in a way that, um, that we all need. Well, for one thing, you have these bee, these bee statues throughout yes. the city. Yes. Well, that's a collaborative effort because you have individual artists, and then you have the, um, was it Rachel Katz who yes. designed the mold? Oh, brilliant. Yes, brilliant mold. So yeah. one, once again, drawing on people who aren't necessarily politicians, right. but they care about the community, and they are making a, a they're making a difference. They are, they are. And this statue that we're gonna unveil is in front of the new fire station. It's Firefighter Bee. Okay. And it is gonna be so cute. I won't do the spoiler. Thing. There are so many cute things about this bee. They're different than our other ones. People will love it. Um, and so now we can say, truthfully, take the detour for the bee tour, because we have 12 bees. And it's worth coming to Greenfield to learn about these bees and why they were created. Um, there's actually a QR code Okay. If you're technologically well, advanced. Uh, I it's have never used one. <laughs> super easy. I didn't either, but now I do. So you just download it on your on your phone, and then you wave it over the, the QR code on the B, and it tells you all about that B. It's amazing. Oh, so there's a biographical details about each B. Each one, yeah. Who created them, why they were created, what the idea was behind the artist, you know, creating that image. In and they're all different. In some ways, Sandy, this th this is the best of times. Well, I it mean, is. When, you, when you think about what we the availability we have to information, oh. to, to sharing with each other, the tools we have to make life, you know, yeah, and and yep, yeah. <laughs> well, here we are. Yeah, here we are. Here we are, and we're sharing the information. That's, <laughs> That's what we right. do. We love it. Yeah. So tell yeah. me about Lorenzo then. Who is this Lorenzo uh, guy? Lorenzo Langstroth. He was a brilliant man. He was a very quiet man, um, in some ways. He moved to Greenfield in 1840. Okay, so he's a newbie. From Phil yeah, he, he's still not really one of ours, right? <laughs> he grew up in Philadelphia, and then he went to Yale University, became a minister um, and a teacher. And so he moved to Greenfield, believe it or not, to be headmaster of the Greenfield High School for Girls, which was in what is now the McCarthy Funeral Home, next to Second Church. It had two huge wings on each side for the dorms. He was the headmaster for like five years. And then Second Church needed a minister, and they hired him, so he just moved next door, <laughs> and he became the minister. During that time, he, he kind of revived his childhood interest of insects. He was actually obsessed with bees, in a good way, in the best of ways. <laughs> <laughs> in the best of ways. And he discovered what all beekeepers in the world now know, that in order to clean out a hive, his kind of hive with the frames, you need, the bee needs 3 sixteenths of an inch to move around to be to keep the hive clean so the beekeeper can lift up the frame harvest the honey put it back in that was his creation and that was huge for the world all over the world in almost every country people still use the Langstroth hive it's incredible and so this was a story that no one knew about and now we know about it right 
Um, before that, they used to have, let me just take oh, this. Oh, that's right. I've so seen pictures. So we would pictures. have bee skeps, right? right? This was like classic when you have beehives shown. But this was all made of straw. Right. And you'd have to break it open to get the honey out, and then it was destroyed. So he found a better way. And, and, and it's recyclable. Who knew? He was ahead of his time. So that's who he was, and that's why we have this bee fest, because of him, to celebrate that. Um, because it also, let me just say, it also ties in with agriculture, right? Right, Because sure. bees need to pollinate our crops and so forth, which also ties in with the farmer's market. Right. Because we have a pollinator parade of children and a band, the expandable brass band, that marches through the farmer's market to make that connection for children and for everyone with agriculture and bees. So there again, was it John Muir that said, you pull a string in nature and everything's attached. Right. And that's really what it is. And, and nature is so amazing. And, and this is a little bit off topic, but I was reading about in Florida, they have these giant invasive snails. Ooh. And the kites um, that had fed on this, uh, the native snails w died off in mass because they weren't strong enough and big enough to handle these larger snails. Well, oh. then guess what nature did within a couple of generations? The kites are larger now, have bigger beaks, and they're eating those snails. Oh, heavens. It's wow. like if we stay out of the way and don't try to impose our will yeah, so much, exactly. nature is, is more powerful than we are. It is. But we have True. to honor nature. And so there's the, the, the honeybees, but there are also native pollinators oh. that are critical. Very valuable. And one of the things we've been learning is, like, for instance, don't go out there the first, as soon as the first nice day and start digging in your soil and disturbing the native pollinators. Uh -uh. So the education... It, there's, you, know, you pull that string and then yes. you find out more about this and you find out more about that. And, and what it really comes down to is we're all connected. We are. We are. Yep. Yep. Bees are leading the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just give them that. Right. Um, so th what are some of the events that are taking place this yeah. May 18th? May 18th, right. So we have events kind of primarily designed for children okay. to help them feel comfortable around bees and to know from a very little age on up not just the bees, but all the environment, to really care in a very specific way for the environment. So we have a bee pinata. We have uh, with, nat with seeds and honey sticks in it this okay. year, right? Right. So it's environmentally friendly. We have um, hats, making hats of you know with bee designs and stuff for kids. We have um, Art Space is a new partner this year. Okay. They're making bee bees out of clay. The kids can paint and then put on a necklace or what have you. Um, they can paint beehives, actual beehives that um, the beekeepers are bringing to us. Oh. We did this last year. It was unbelievable. So much interest. So they paint, each person takes a side of a hive. We have, I think, 100 sides. And then those hives are put in the apiaries around Franklin County. Okay, okay so can I do that? So cool. Absolutely. You don't have to be a kid then to no, paint No, no. Oh, kids and adults, okay. artists, whoever. Okay. Whoever wants to paint them. I do. Go for it. <laughs> Good. I'll be looking forward to yours. Yay. Yay. So we're doing that. Um, we have the pollinator parade for the children. We hope that the kids come dressed as bees or butterflies or flowers or something. What well, seems every year I see more bee costumes. They do. So it's, do the local shops so hold them because they know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because even Some the brass do, yeah. band, they're all dressed in bee they, costumes. Their costumes are yellow and black. And Richie Davis told me this like five years ago. He said, we need to be at your bee fest because that's our costume. So they had that as their costume before the before, bee fest. Before. Who knows why? It's cool, right? It is way cool. Yeah, Richie yeah. Richie Davis is way cool. He's yeah. a good guy. He's so, a good guy. So that is for the kids. And we also have a birthday cake for little Lorenzo Langstroth. It's his 214th birthday. So we do that. I know, it's crazy. And there's music all day. We've never had music all day. So we have uh, Woodwind, the Quabbin Valley Woodwind Quartet okay. is coming in the morning. So where are they playing? At the Bee Fest. Well, um, I know, but I mean... Where, so Bee Fest is outside at Court yeah, Square. It's, it's, are they going to be outside playing? Yeah, uh, so the front lawn of the church, of okay, Second Congregational okay. Church, that's where the, it's kind of um, you know, centered, right. the most activities. Um, so they'll play. Um, we have, um, do you know Vi Walker? Yes, she's, she's playing hilarious. her saw. She's going to bring her saw <laughs> and 15 fiddles and ukuleles. They're going to play. Um, we have Twice as Smart Kids, which is a wonderful um, uh, program that's centered in our church. And these kids come for after-school tutoring. Um, and they are going to sing, or I don't know what they're going to do. They have a presentation. They have a presentation. And we have somebody else. Uh, oh, and the, and the uh, expandable brass band. Right. So we have lots of music. It's uh. great. And then the beekeepers come, and so they are beefing up their education this year. Beefing up. We have yeah. beefing up. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have large new banners that are educational, one for children, one for beekeepers, and one that's just beautiful poetry kind of um, banner. We have poetry writing. 
So in the front lawn of Second Church is called, a uh, bee called This Is Life by Mary Chicoin. Yeah. I painted that, and there are poems all over it. So uh, Mary Claire Power, who is a poet, um, will be with Amy Timmons, who's also a poet, will be writing, um, they won't be, they'll be directing people to write poetry, kids, adults, whoever. And they'll, um, so that's gonna be fun. And then we're gonna hang them on a string around the poetry bee. So cute, okay. right, right? It's this, great. This is just. Yeah, it's fun, it's fun. Oh, and MDAR is coming, the uh, Mass Department of Ag Resources. They bring lots of information. The head, uh, he's called the chief apiarist of, of uh, Massachusetts is coming, Kim Scrim. Oh. Terrific, so knowledgeable. So if people have questions about beekeeping or honey production, come. And there are a room. lot of apiaries around, there I've noticed. There are more and more, there are. And some are small, right. some are large. And, you, and well, the thing is, is that if, you've, if you learn not to be intimidated by bees, they're very gentle. We pet them, we pet bumblebees now. I mean, that's a little weird, I know. But they are very, uh, in the fall, mostly you see a lot of bumblebees. They're very slow moving right. and they're very soft. Right. And they don't sting, you right. know, so they're sweet. It's well, good. And yet we have such fear of insects. I mean, they're so alien in so many ways. But you know, once you learn that without them, we don't eat right. fruits and vegetables, and they, they pollinate like 35 to 40% of the food we eat. So if you like fruits and vegetables and you like to eat. Well, and one of the reasons why we've had this colony collapse disorder is that you have these commercial beehives that they truck them from, oh, uh, mo from monoculture to monoculture, and they're feeding on uh, plants that have been insecticided to death. So how is that going to be good for the bees? It's not. And there's no, that's a called forage in their okay. world, in that world. Um, there's no forage for the bees underneath these uh, almond trees, mostly in California. So that's the other thing we invite people to do is, you know, put a pollinator garden in your yard. It can be a small one, it can be a planter, it can be a large one, but feed the bees, they need to eat. Well, and, and part of that is also recognizing dandelions are our friend. They're the f they come up earlier you than bet. most flowers. Yep. The bees need them. They so do. Want, you know, don't pull them. Don't pull them. Nope, nope. Now, I, nope. I know that people say, well, they're invasive, because originally they came over like on the Mayflower or something. You know. I'm sorry, they're a food source. They are a food source, yeah. And yeah. we need to respect and that. So we do, we do. In fact, that way nature works, if you watch it, the native plants, they bloom at different times. Yes, and that's a great thing, right? That's And that's what they actually recommend, um, is to plant in succession, so that they have something in the spring, the summer, and then the fall to, to you know forage on the whole time, yeah. And it also teaches us about the cycle of life. It does. It I mean, does. we're part of a all lesson, of this. lesson, yeah, yeah, lesson we need to learn, yeah. You have so much fun with this too, don't you? I love it, oh my God, it is so much fun, because you're bringing information to people who need it and who want it, Right. and you're training the next generation. You know, that's, that's like- Well, and the children is a big emphasis of what oh, you're doing huge. because we they started, have to lead the yeah. way. We started with kids because kids were afraid of bees. And right. it's like, you shouldn't be afraid of bees. You know, they'll only sting you if you if they feel like you're uh, being aggressive toward them. Right. Because when they sting, they die. Right. And so they don't want to die. Right. You know? right. Well, and actually when they do sting, <laughs> I know that with wasps, they set out a pheromone to yes. notify other wasps yeah. and then you're gonna attract a swarm. Yeah, yeah, so you don't want that. So you don't. No, no, no. No, no it's not, no. not so good. No, not good. We've got our bee um, sponsors, yeah, which GCTV you are one. Is a bee look sponsor. at this, yep, look at this, you're a sponsor. Yep. Check it and out. And so, yep, and uh, what we do, the sponsors are on the um, lamppost in Greenfield right. for like five months. Right through the fair. Oh, but they don't break. Okay, they're, so they're co they're coated so that yeah. the rain doesn't yeah. destroy right. them. Right. No, no, they're fine. They're fine. Wow. Um, and so that helps us. Also, we um, when you are a sponsor, then that money goes to us to help us continue to do what we do because we're all volunteers. Right. And so um, it does we, cost just, we have money. to pay for things like you know things like this. Then we also have a bee bazaar. That's strange. A strange bazaar thing. So we have items that are all bee themed. They're donated from all over the country from um, different um, organizations, different uh, companies that make this a bee helmet. So do you go online shoes. and just Google I do. bee stuff? And I go bee plus ornaments, bee plus Santa, uh, you know, whatever. And all this stuff shows up. Here's a fun one. Here are bee gloves. They're gardening gloves. They're beautiful. Um, a company ordered these uh, for a client who couldn't use them for various reasons. And they donated 300 to us. So they normally sell for 23 bucks, we're selling them for four. Again, just to get um, the bee image in homes so that people can feel very comfortable around them. Uh, and the thing is, is this is a, like a one of a kind. It's a one of a kind. And they make great gifts, a stocking stuffer. I mean, you know, so all that, we've got stuff for kids, little bee socks, we've uh -huh. got little, a million different things. And this is all about 
promoting um, the love of bees, really. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm so excited. Me too. Come. <laughs> bring everybody you know. Honestly, it'll be so fun. So it's May 18th. It 18th. starts at what time in the morning? It starts at 9. Okay. And it goes till 1215. Okay, so that's so not very much time, actually. It's not because, again, we started with little kids, and they have to nap, you oh, know? Oh, yeah, that's right. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, I, I have to nap. I have, yeah, well, we all do. But um, so we, we do this intense um, time when people can really feel fun with each other and feel they're educating you know, each other and, and getting education themselves. Um, and then at 12.15, that ends, and then we move down to the fire station where we're going to unveil the new firefighter bee. So it's a full day. It's a, let's hope the weather's nice. I always you, hope the weather's nice. Yeah, how does that work? Well, we would go inside the church. Okay, if, if so you're prepared for we that. We are, and we wouldn't have the, you know, a lot of the events, but we would have what we'd be able to do that day. Okay, well, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed about the weather because um, we're in New England, and it is changeable. It is changeable, yeah. And I also said there's a few other events going on during that week, too. Um, well, let's so hear it. Ryan and Casey is going to have a, a mead and um, whiskey honey tasting in the morning. Okay, um, I think I'll avoid that one. They're right next to the, <laughs> far, to the fire station. You don't want to see that. The Garden Cinema um, is going to run a free movie for children. Oh, nice. Um, called Yogi and the Bees, I think. So that's great at 11. Um, in a vintage over on Hope Street is going to have special bee and honey things all week. Um, so there's lots going on besides just that day on that site. Um, peop businesses are getting more and more involved. Well, they're seeing and this as, as an opportunity to bring in an outside clientele or, or even actually the people that or live around, the people that absolutely. live here need to know there's stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and mean, there is a lot of stuff going on. There is a lot on. if you look for it yeah. or if they know about it. And this is yeah. why we're doing this That's so right. that they know about it. There's no excuse for people not to show up if they have seen this, That's right? That's right. That's right. Because this is what makes Greenfield so special. It does. It does. Um, yeah. Now, I, I, you were involved in creating the energy park. Is this similar kind of process for you, where you find a whole bunch of people that say, yeah, that's a great idea, let's work together, roll we up our sleeves? look for like-minded people. And it's, again, that hive mentality <laughs> of, like, find who loves that, work together, and get it done. And that's really what it is. Because yeah. there's no way you could even name all the people that have helped out. Oh, it just goes I'd on be and here on. forever, yeah, yeah. And, and being the 14th year, we've had hundreds of volunteers, you know, over the years. Some are the same that we've had right. when we started, and then new people thankfully come in. And so if someone wanted to actually get involved, because they're saying, yeah, I want to roll up my sleeves and be part of this, how do they, how do, they do that? They uh, contact me. Oh, so how if they go to the be? Bee Fest, they'll see you. Yeah. This is Sandy Thomas, everybody. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just tell me, and then you know, by this time this airs next year, they can you know they can help out. Right. Well, and that's and yeah. that's the thing is that um, yeah. we're filming this today. It will air before the Bee Fest. Sure. But sure, it will sure. also air after the Bee Fest. Perfect. But the message remains the same. Yes. Yeah. Get involved in your community. Make a difference. Whether it's Bee Fest or whatever else it is, Drew. There's so much going on that needs good energy, and needs people who, you know, who think, let's make Greenfield better. Let's make, yeah. well, and you've been doing that ever since I've known you, oh, and um, you set such a fine example. Oh, jeez. I'm a big fan. You're going to embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank well, you. And, and you were saying, we were but talking earlier, and you're saying, you know, it's not about me, it's about all these, it's about all of us. And it takes everybody. It, it does. I mean, it absolutely takes a village. That's that saying, right? And it does. Yeah. Well, I, I just, I'm so thrilled mm. that, that uh, that I'm able to help you sh get this information out there. You've already done I an amazing job because every year I see this going on. Yeah. And I remember my son is 14 now. Oh, so wow. they were little babies the yes. first time. I was like, what's going on over there? And that's right. And we didn't really even know because, yeah. so, well, that's over at the Second Congo Church. Yeah, it's all church. No, it's not just the church not. people. It's no, it's every, it's, it's the, the whole community. Yeah, yeah. So and the church too, but Well, yeah. right. But yeah, but it's the community. Everyone's invited and um, and everyone walks away kind of happy. I so think. that the website, if people are interested, this is www.greenfieldbeefestfest.org. Okay. Greenfield so I will Discovery. put that up uh, on the credits oh, and oh, so that people can see it. Oh, and I you. really appreciate you coming on the show. I appreciate you having me. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Good. You've been tuned to Local Bias. I'm Drew Hutchison, and I would love. I'm. I'm going. Good. Good. <laughs> so I'd love to see you there as well, and let us know what you think. So, um, yeah. so take care. Mm -hmm.